And we're live. Good evening, you beautiful, beautiful, lovely, sexy people. This is Dubious Squirrel here, streaming one of the last matches of the Marshall Olympiad Reborn 2 season. This is a Div E match between CDU A, Critical Damage Unit, America versus FJRD. And we hope it's going to be a good one. There's been some comments uh, about how messed up my screen is uh, streaming. Uh, so I just want to address that early on. It's because I'm running ultra wide resolution and uh, Twitch doesn't like it very much. Screw you, Twitch. I love you, really. But yeah, it might look a bit weird compared to the other streams. I hope, I hope you can put up with it. So, Hunters of the Fordlands are in first place in Division E at the moment with 66 points, very commanding lead. And CDUA are down in last place and fifth place with only 9 points. This could be a bit of a one-sided match, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping CDUA, I'm going to be rooting for them, can take some points from the evil Fordlands people. But uh, we'll find out shortly. Both teams are locked, so I guess we're going to jump straight into the action. So, Rupert Light Conquest for the first map. I'm sure you all know this map very well at this point in time, anyone that's been playing for a while anyway. Wide open map, um, some verticality in it on the platforms. It'll be interesting to see if uh, both teams make a run for theta early on. CDU, what do we have a Niger? And our own Niger with the uh, large lasers, alright, good. Direwolf AC2s. That's kind of a brawly build, a Rantor. Ultra AC2s, Jagermech Master Peak. And then a light and a medium couple of lights. Alright, let's run over the other side and see if we can have a quick look at what they're in as well. Kappa is under enemy control. Okay, so it looks like uh, hunters are running a four-man lightish group. Fairly brawly. Early capture of uh, Theta from Critical Damage Unit. So, two caps apiece at the moment. Yeah. 
Interesting hunters are forming up in the low ground here. Looks like they may do some kind of push when they see the opportunity to. You know, with the builds I've got, I'd be expecting them to be up on the high ground um, trading early, but uh, they're posted up here onto the plat well, platform for some reason. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. CDU taking the more traditional, I guess, uh, high ground on the platform, which I think I prefer. And uh, they're also taking the cap advantage, now three caps to one. So this is going to force Hunters of the Fordlands to do something soon, hopefully, or they're... well, the, the, the points are counting down. Not in their favour. Now Hunter the, Hunters of the Fordland make a move onto Theta. And uh, CDU have spotted this. They have the high ground, they can get easy shots down onto them. This should be an advantage for them. Sorry, wrong way round there. Ford, Hunters of the Fordlands are now pushing up. This is their big push. They're going to try and push right up into the high ground and brawl CDU down. Master Pig's already taken fairly heavy damage there. I guess he's uh, he's going to go down shortly, and he does. Big messy brawl on the high ground. <laughs> oh my god! Player unknown's taken a lot of damage. CDU are down by two players already. Player unknown's down. Oh gosh. Hunters with a solid push up onto the high ground seems to be uh, very effective. Topical now making a run for it. He's not going to survive long though, I don't think. He's being chased. Stop running topical, you got to turn and fight, dude. Get some damage done. Oh, he's got medium lasers! That's a different build. Gosh, I'm not sure what that build is. It's not the one I'd run, but... Uh, well done, anyway. Two remaining pilots now for CDU. They have to play the cap game, they've got no other choice. They do have cap lead. Not by very much, though, and they're going to lose it quite quickly. Uh, they should really split up and go for different caps. But, uh, I don't know, maybe they're sticking together, hoping they can uh, steal a couple of those yeah, last kills. Gone. It's going to be tough for them, though, because Hunters have still got full armor by the looks of it. Megasus is uh, the lowest in the Viper at 58%, Enemy but um, it's, he's still green, so... Psycho Titan trying to figure out what to do. He's in a sticky place though here. He's now surrounded uh, playing a mini game of NASCAR around this rock out crop. 
but uh, I think it's over for him. And that leaves Frogkin all on his own. Some interesting builds on these mechs that I haven't seen in any other division that I've cast so far. I've only done a, a few casts uh, for this tournament. But uh, I, love, I love seeing the builds in Division E games. They're often um, not meta at all, they just do completely their own thing. And that's interesting to me, I like it. Remarkably still quite close in terms of caps. Uh, I very much doubt Frodkin can uh, carry this on his own. He's now going to cap by the looks of it. Has he been spotted? Yep, looks like uh, Lucius has spotted him. So he'll no doubt be directing his teammates to uh, Kappa here. And here they come, I guess it's going to be over very shortly. Locust doesn't have uh, a great deal in armour. He's doing his best though. Going for the legs. No, he's legged himself. And he goes down. So, a convincing first drop win for FJRD, well done. And uh, CDU also, uh, I guess, well done. You took the high ground, I like that. You just didn't survive the push. Wasn't very well received. And uh, some of the builds were unorthodox, but uh, it's, it's all good. Let's have a quick look at the damage. Even damage spread from FJRD. No particular standout, so very even there. And on the CDU side, Frogkin, despite surviving to the end, only did 75 damage, but did his best. And uh, Whamhammer in the Blood Asp went down for 46 damage. Oh, I didn't catch that, I wonder what happened. That was probably in the initial brawl. And then fairly even damage from the rest of the team. This is when I wish I had a co-caster because I've got to do spreadsheet kung fu and uh, I'm not very good at multitasking so I'm not very good at talking while I'm doing other shit but uh, hey ho. So let me see, the next map is going to be Canyon Network Domination, I need to change maps. Good old Canyon Domination, or good old Canyon and then Domination. I like this map. Uh, 
it's long been one of my favorites, especially after the changes. The changes were made to try and um, stop so much of the NASCAR on this map. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember the old version of this map, but it was just a, a giant game of NASCAR and quick play, especially all the damn time. And it still kind of is, but it's not always now. I think this design is better than the previous one. It'll be interesting to see what the teams bring for, for this particular map. Maybe more tradey. You can do a brawl on it. Uh, of course, it is domination, so that would definitely work. Just check, checking out some of the comments now. <laughs> yeah, some some uh, some funny comments there. I'm not gonna pick anyone out in particular. Go Froggy. Yeah, Froggy was hopping around at the end there, <laughs> living his best uh, squirrel life or frog life. I'm not going to do map strats, I'm too lazy for that tonight. Just uh, wait for both teams to get themselves ready and it looks like they nearly are done. Both teams are locked, so we're going to go straight into the next map. Snack with a cheeky uh, good luck, have fun. And I nearly missed it. I merely, I nearly did a small stream there, a postage stamp stream. I'm glad I saw that. Okay, CDU, what do you have? Lerms, I like it. Fleet command coming in. Large lasers AC20, that's hostile. interesting. Bit more close range. AC2s, large pulse. This is kind of medium tradey stuff. UX, yeah, large lasers. Ultra AC2s, kind of a mixed bag. Hunters, Brawly. Magnus, uh, definitely Brawly. Snake with uh, more Brawl. Brawl. And Brawl. So here we go, Hunters going Brawl and CDU doing uh, kind of a mixed bag of traders here.
So I see to use setup in a decent position for trading. Hunters have obviously spotted that and they're beginning the push. CD with a very tenuous grip on uh, the circle. And uh, here comes here comes the push from Hunters. I'm not sure if CDU have fully grasped their situation yet because they're not moving at all, they're just standing around here. But they're going to grasp it very shortly. <laughs> Top cat goes down very quickly. Master pig next. I think they need to work on their comms a bit. CDU should have seen this coming uh, quite early and maybe have started backing off and had a light skirt around the circle to keep their place, but they didn't. And they're going down in short order. Terror of death goes down for hunters. Uh, Lucius goes down next, yeah he does, but uh, CD only have three pilots left, two pilots left now. And uh, they're making a run for it. I mean, I don't know what they can do at this point, it's not like they can win on caps. Lahaya has to stay in the circle. That's going to make life very difficult for him because they're just going to push him right out of the circle. Brenta is uh, wisely trying to stay out of sight. And it's Piranha and failing. He's now finally forced to uh, fight. It's not going to last long though. But Brenta puts up a good effort and then goes down. Lahaya just abandons the circle completely, so now they're counting down. There's nothing you can do either way, really. But, um,. Go on, Lahaya. Go out in a blaze of glory. Go on, run straight into them. Running around the outside isn't going to help you, do. They're just counting down. Jenna. Six CR medium lasers, alright. Another good push from Hunters. And uh, CDU, I think they had a good position early on, but they just didn't see the push coming in time. Or maybe they did see it coming and uh, they didn't react quickly enough. They didn't seem to react at all, so that was kind of strange. The damage spread, uh, CDU pretty bad. I'm sorry fellas, I don't like to be rough on uh, any team, but um, Direwolf went down for 47 damage, that's not good. Uh, decent damage spread from FJRD. Uh, the fire starter went down fairly early on, I guess. Warhammer went down for them, Just did 500 damage. Amity 45 in the Mist Links. Only 60 damage. But alright. I've got to go back to my spreadsheet foo quickly.
I may have a co-caster joining me shortly, which will be nice because two voices are better than one. Especially when you're stuck listening to an idiot like me. Uh, here's Mr. Ivor. Mr. Ivor, say hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Dubs. Hey, dude. I'm going to invite you to the lobby. So uh, thank you very much for coming along because uh, I'm not very good at talking and uh, two voices are better than one, as I just said on the stream. I get how that goes. Uh, here to free up some brain space for you. Thank you very much. All right, I'm in. Okay, so let me have a look. Leading into the third map now, Solaris City Conquest. What do you have to say about that? Oh, well, I mean, Solaris City, uh, not very many sight lines. Um, I'm just kind of catching up here on the canyon drop as it's going by on the stream. Looks like Fjord came prepared for a brawl. Honestly, I would be surprised if they didn't do it again. Now, I have to admit, CDU is a bit of a mystery to me. I don't know a whole lot about it. But, uh, you know, smart money would be Brawl v. Brawl. Um, or I guess you could get some high ground uh, in some light mechs, though. I don't know if any particular team has a, a pension for that. So I'm kind of hoping for a nice little brawl coming up here. Yeah, so far, uh, FJRD have gone uh, two for two on uh, brawling, and they've done it quite effectively. CDU has turned up with tradey decks, and they've taken some decent positions, but they haven't reacted very well to the brawl pushes. They haven't made much effort to receive them at all, as far as I can tell. Of course, this is Solaris City and its conquest, so brawling is uh, still an option, but if there's a fight develops around Theta or something, but it's not as effective on this map, I don't think. We'll see, though. That is true, um, going with the con uh, the conquest thing. Um... I don't know, could see some uh, some weird skirmish brawls, like a little heavies over Theta action, and then uh, maybe some skirmishes around the outside. That is a good point. I did not consider Conquest into the mix, but uh, yeah, maybe some outside fights. Who knows? Maybe some team will put uh, put some Lerms over uh, with some Overwatch into a couple uh, points. Lerms on Solaris City, that would be interesting to see. This is Divi, though, so anything, outside. anything yeah. could happen, yeah. You can learn from the outside, and if you're counting on um, the other team taking some back caps, setting up a Lermer there may not be an atrocious idea. I, it would be interesting. But also, please no, don't. Yeah, please no, don't. <laughs> the only missiles you want to take are SRMs, maybe MRMs. Mm. Yeah, if you're sitting up top on some of the roofs, maybe MRMs. But... Actually, ATMs could work on this, maybe. Oh, not so, maybe, but not since the great nerfing. Like when they were doing three damage in that close range, they would be lovely. But now they're just kind of, I don't know, they're subpar all around in my opinion. Oh, did they change that? I missed yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's two and a half per missile now within ah. your short range, and it's one and a half on the extreme range. I think they should have just added more. Uh, more heat to it or something to balance it because I, I will agree they were a bit much to deal with but uh, now they're just not great. Right. Here we go, just wait for the load in. Say hi to the weird green faces in the sky. Here we go. We're in. We'll go check out uh, the Fjordlands if you want to check out CDU. Command coming in. Yep, on it. And hold the resource point. Stop any hostiles that get in your way. Okay, CDU Kodiak 3 with uh, Ultra AC 5s and 10s. Uh, Blackjack with ER Lodge lasers, Snub Nose, and that's a mixed build. Uh, Timberwolf with ER medium lasers. LRM 15. Yes. He has brought LRMs. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> the I Savage with MRMs. That's a bit more of a sensible choice. Frogkin is now in a decent build. He's got eight uh, heavy machine guns and four ER micro lasers. That's good. 
and I guess I've lost track of the other guys. We'll catch up with them later. What do you have on Hunter's side? Yeah, so we've got a like a four-man wolf pack question mark. Uh, one of them is a dervish with MRMs. Um, we got a viper with I think a viper F with small pulse. Uh, I'm sorry, flamers, ER meads, and the eight heavy machine guns. We've got a shard, uh, Arctic cheetah shard. Uh, with small pulse and uh, command of 1D, which I believe is the one with Cap XL. Uh, and for heavies, we've got a Tempest, an Archer Tempest with MRMs, a Warhammer with uh, small lasers, MRMs, AMS, Cyclops with MRMs. We're MRM heavy here. What's the Faffy got? Faffy's got LBX. So yeah, they're a little mid rangey brawly with missiles for the most part over here. We got a little skirmish going over here on Epsi. Between the Piranha and Miss Lynx versus, uh, well, three hitters of the four Fjordlands. This is uh, not good for CDU. They need to get out rather than take this fight. Yeah, Frogkin's been singled out here and chased. He needs to make a run for it. Uh, he's. Yep. Those Use that so... to get on top of things? Yeah. Oh, he tried go. to. He didn't make it, though. Uh oh, this is bad. That's this is fine. bad. Frogkin goes down early for is. CDU. That's uh, not good. And they're returning for Brenta, who stuck around. Not the best idea, especially in that Piranha. They are a little squishy here. He's and fairly ground quick. Ground. Uh, he may escape, but he's being chased by a commando. He's also yeah. very quick. If he gets enough distance, he can take that commando for sure. But Absolutely, yeah. The firepower yeah. those Piranhas have got is crazy. Oh, yeah. But, man, they die so quick. It's I, I like the way they're balanced, personally. You know, we got a fight over here by Theta-ish. The Theta FC side. With the heavies. Sean Bombi and Tip of the Spear and the Archer against the... The Atlas of La Savage. So, MRMs on MRMs. Interesting. Would not have thought for such balance. Yeah, kind of sandpaper builds those MRMs on. They spread the damage all over the place. They can be very effective at close range, though. Yeah, good for farm, good for numbers. That's kind of why you don't see them a lot in comp, is because they do spread that damage, right? Oh, Terror of Death getting some shots into the back of Savage. Yordlands using their lights to just backstab these heavies in the in uh, for CDU. I think they're going to start to go down quick here. Yes, they are. Renta trying to get a taste of that luscious Balzac, but uh, also running away in the face of a Viper and a Commando. Let's see, is Renta going to be able to get the Viper uh, Masagus Ama? He's getting some work done on it. We're getting there. Both arms off, but there's still a lot of mech left. Oh, and it's half, so eh, maybe. But we've got a Warhammer in here, Commando. It's not, not looking good for Brenta. There goes no, his leg. Yeah, it's over. Yep. The enemy has well done, Fjord, on that one. We failed. They, uh, what I saw from Fjord there um, versus CDU. CDU seemed a bit scattered versus Fjord. While they did have their, uh, you know, their medium pack going out there and, and, and picking on some CDU folks, they were still within easy reach of their own heavy, so they could return to the fight when it got there. Just, just uh, run us through funded. the damage, if you wouldn't mind, while I'm updating yeah. the spreadsheet. Yeah, absolutely. So we got the Revan at 508 damage. Uh, by far the standout here, by almost 200 damage from anybody else on either team. Uh, player unknown in the uh, Cyclops there. Coming in at 330... And here we see, uh, you know, the story in some of the numbers. We've got the Mislinks, Huntsman, and the Timberwolf from CDU. Um, hang on, make sure I'm looking at the right foot. I'm sorry, pulling double Ds, except for that uh, Huntsman. I didn't see the Huntsman get deleted, but it only did two damage, um, which is just brutal. Um, oh, sorry, I missed the higher at uh, 437. I am looking at the wrong thing. I'm looking at match scare. Holy crow. 853 damage from the Revan. 500 damage from player unknown. We are still seeing the same proportions ultimately with that match score. So look at the ratios, folks. Never mind me. All right. What's up next this week, Dubious? 
So let me see, we need to do a team swap and then what do we have? Mining Collective Domination. Oh, Mining Dom, this should be interesting. Yeah. Again, Brawl play very strong on Domination, um, but Mining well known for its slight lopsidedness um, with that center. So if you're gonna Brawl, one team can sit up there and pause in the center, the other, they really kind of can't because uh, they can just start getting picked apart. Um, but also some great, great, great outside trade positions, especially if your team has jump jets, which you end up with a ground bound brawl. Honestly, those traders can just take positions outside and pick it apart and just kind of thumb their noses at, at the brawler. So be interested to see how this goes um, and how, how ground bound both teams uh, choose to be. I think that'll be part of the large difference here. Uh, Fjord with the with the good pushes and honestly the good team cohesion here. They're staying together. I should think they have the advantage on um, the domination match, particularly. Um, but we'll see how they how they uh, decide to go. Um, sometimes it's nice to mix things up, and this is this is a good map to try it. Oh, I'm talking details. Let me pull up a map strat so I can. Yeah, so I think there's some some interesting options here. Um, I'd like to do the uh, map strats thing, but I haven't prepared it and uh, kind of feeling lazy tonight. So I guess that's out the window. <laughs> no, I get how that goes. I was just pulling one up so that I can talk about things and less vague things because I don't have all of the details of the map committed yeah. to memory. But team one. Uh, is the team with the advantage here? No, no. Team th two, team one is at a disadvantage. Team two has the windows into theta, um, or the center of the circle. Of course, it's being dumb. The the middle doesn't matter much. You can avoid it, but it can make a great staging area for a push from team two because they can just kind of sit there, and make sure everyone's together, then over we go. Um. Of course, the top side of the map also particularly uh, powerful. The Delta line and Charlie line, some great vantage points there if you want to just take the top and split the map from north to south. But we'll see if either team decides. Good for numbers. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of sideways thinking. Let's see, catching up on the chat here, looking like... Uh, Talking about various coaching folks, ATMs are too hot for the damage now from Weapon Master X. Yes, I 100% agree. Um, and that damage was nice because it made you uh, get real close to him to get that optimal damage. But uh, yeah, we've got some comments on the holding spots. Yep. Yeah, some weird staying around for fights. CDU could... Uh, stand to be a little more mobile in their strats, and I would love to see them adapt that here. Maybe they're just having a bad night, but I would uh, general comment there that I'm seeing. CDU actually, I think, have done okay on their initial positioning and their their builds. I mean, their Divi builds, but they're not completely outrageous. What they seem to lack is uh, coordination um, and good intel early on. Uh, I'm sure they saw that push on canyon but they just didn't seem to react to it and that puzzled me yeah intel there are two parts to that intel story and that's kind of been part of my give b story for this season and last is one get the intel two what the hell do you do with it once you got it right oh yeah and uh that's that's the thing cdu initial positioning not the worst like you're saying but in getting that intel and moving on it or reacting to it or you know when you get pushed one of your mechs stays behind and just kind of sits there and waits it's like they almost seem to be getting into position and staying there while Fjord is just rolling through each position. Both teams locked now. The map is set. I guess we're going to drop into the action once again. This is drop three. And for anyone that's joined us recently so far, um, FJRD have taken three drops to zero from CDU. Hopefully CDU can pull out a win or so. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, um, I think this domination, probably their best chance at it. Just a good coordinated push and on, on they go. I 
definitely feel like FJRD are going to bring another brawl push. I would imagine they've they've really kind of geared themselves towards that mid to brawl range, even with MRMs. Yeah, they're way up at the top of the league. Uh, I think this is their go-to strat, and it's working uh, quite well. Mm -hmm. The spectator key uh, <laughs> strokes are getting real second nature to me now. We'll roll across the fingers to hit all my buttons. You know, up here on what is this team one side and Charlie two, there's like this little roof thing. I wonder if anything could get up here or if it bounces out of bounds. Be a wicked sniper spot over here by the alpha. Anyway, here they come. I'll head over to CDU if you want to take the Fjordlands. Fleet command coming in. Capture the target area and engage any hostiles. Okay, Fordlands, uh, fire starter, miss links. What else do we have? Player unknown in a MRM Cyclops, that's a bit interesting. LBX times four Fafnir. And over here on the right hand side, we've got Dervish, a Stormcrow. What's on the Stormcrow? 12 small pulse. Oh god, I love that build. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, this is definitely another brawl push from uh, Fordlands. Yeah. CDU setting up for a brawl. A lot of MRMs. Man, guys, the, the numbers are good, but the focus is bad. Like, you can do all that damage, but you're not going to kill a mech necessarily. The one head scratcher here, we've got some machine guns on the lights. Uh, actually, what's on this griffin before I reveal the secret? We've got two small lasers and four SRM6. So yeah, a brawl griffin, but we've got this Lurm Shadow Cat who hung out in the back, not getting the info um, that they really could have used on this brawl, um, but is now up on the front lines for reasons I'm not entirely sure, but it's two LRM-15s, two medium lasers. LRM Shadowcat. <laughs> yeah, 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 LRM Shadowcat. Um, a little teleporty, so maybe, maybe there's some uh, connection issues there. Let's see, we've got some UAVs going up in the back end of CDU trying to any screens. Meanwhile, we got Terror of Death up here. A bit of an overlooked position trying to find where they're moving and where they're at. All the UAVs love seeing all these UAVs. Good scatter, guys. Wham Hammer, though, being distracted by Amity's mislinks back here, pulling the Griffin away from the fight. It was a great distraction tactic from Fjord. La Savage going down in the mean, baby as Hunters push into CDU. There goes the Lerms. Lerms are down. As Hunters of the Fjordlands again, just taking the taking the back shots from the Mislinks and the Cheetah. Griffin still trying to get into the fight. That is a mech they could have used a good 30 seconds ago. But Fjordlands taking a... a relatively decent amount of hurt here. Is Snek gonna catch it in that Fafner? Halved, but still relatively fresh elsewhere. What else we got going in the center here? Brenta and Topcat. The two remaining Burn mechs, leg. Topcat taking some heavy damage there. Brenta's, uh, yeah, okay. Well, that was over fairly quick. Another effective push from Fjordlands. Yep, Command well done. Pulled, uh, pulled some of the CDU folks the from the back with that machine gun. Um, really just pulled some of the CDU units away. Maybe turned a lot of their attention, at least, from the main push. Yeah, they they've been very good at that, that actually, get, getting the attention yeah. and then uh, having their lights come around and get the back shots. Oh, it's yeah. Really worked right. very well for them. Yeah, the damage column here <laughs> for real this time, 536. For revving in that dervish, that's pretty good. Uh, that is our match high. Next, uh, a throw 420 in that Warhammer for CDU doing 511. But we do end up with two CDU folks again, double Ding the Shadow Cat, the Lerm Shadow Cat doing 11 damage. Uh, but yeah, look at that ping 1300 ping. No wonder. Um, sorry Ouch. about that, music, but that's harsh. 
Um, and then Whamhammer uh, in the Griffin doing 60. So Whamhammer is the one that got pulled away, right, from the fight and was looking for a Miss Lynx that wasn't there and was instead beaten on his compatriots. Otherwise, great damage right across Fjord, 400s, 200s, uh, and two threes, high 100s for the rest of CDU. So ultimately, the numbers that you want to see in a brawl, uh, except for some of those double Ds, they either died quick or got pulled away uh, too soon. So well played on Fjordlands on those distraction tactics. Absolutely. All right, coming in the final match. What is the last one on this one? I haven't actually paid attention to maps for this week. No, I haven't either, really. Um, okay, round six, final drop. Alpine Peaks, Conquest. Oh, Alpine Conquest. I do like this map for comp. I really do, because it's there's so many tactical questions to figure out, right? Yeah. Like, you can do a, a kind of a push. I've seen it done. Uh, but it's super risky, right? Because it's almost all over that open ground, so you end up with a lot of trade. And we've seen Fjord brawling all night. So this will be, if they don't decide to push on this, it'll be an interesting change of their tactics to see how they trade. See, CDU. Yeah, CDU have been typically longer range in this match, and they've taken LRMs, I think, nearly every drop. So this is the map where their chosen strat could really work for them, hopefully. Uh, much more difficult to do any kind of brawl push. Uh, I, well, it can work, but it's yeah, such a wide open go, map. You gotta go like dragon bowling over the hill or something like that. It's yeah. really kind of your only approach. Um, yep, yeah, watching the chat catch up. Uh, yep, catching up with with some of the uh, some of the mining action and the bills that are there. Uh, questioning the. Mean baby, I'm mining, but hey, it's all those MRMs. Unfortunately, got focused down super quick there. Unfortunate, but. Uh, yeah, Alpine, I'll be really interested to see. The I-9 hill, often taken, um, but sometimes ignored. That's always sort of one of my questions, is who's going who's gonna to make a play for that I-9 hill? It's pretty commanding, but it's also in a position where it, it puts you out of range for a lot of things, right? Um, or at the range where you're doing fractions of a point of damage. But it is a great spot for intel. You can see everything. And again, that gamma point often, often going overlooked, but can swing those points and create that pressure. Or are these teams here for the Ungabunga and just going to push into each other on a trading map? I doubt that's going to happen, but who knows? one coming in with the lock here i've just pulled the map up on the uh on the stream for a bit so let's okay. look at what you were talking about i9 hill yeah that's the real tall one. Oh yeah i see it yeah yeah and and it's just got that commanding range but if you if uh team one is fighting over epsi theta and sigma like your range is just it's not that great maybe with ppcs but boy if you put ppcs on that hill they can't miss because that's a that's a lot of damage out of the fight Certainly is. I feel like Team 2 have a cap advantage on this early on. Um, a little bit. So the, Team 1, I think, can ultimately get to Theta first. Um, but Team 2 has Overwatch over Theta first, so they can deny it. And if they're successful in denying and drawing off that initial capper, if it's a flea, you know what I mean? It really depends on what the mechs are. Um, team 2 can get Theta. But they could also just as easily choose to fight Sigma, Theta, Kappa, and ignore Gamma as well. These teams, I suspect, will see uh, some sort of a quick long ranger. Maybe that Shadow Cat uh, scoot out to Gamma and then come back to like Hotel 8 and try to get some Lerms. Um, if I had to take a guess at, what, at, at part of uh, CDU's strategy here. Yeah, there can be a small scrap on Gamma between two lights, uh, trying to contest it. Kappa is an early pick, obviously, for Team 2. Theta is where there's going to be some action. Team 1 can get good sightlines on Sigma if they um, push early from Charlie spawn into, I don't know, Gold 5 with a some kind of long-range mech. Yeah, Team 2 has a bit of a hill uh, into Sigma, so probably going to be some scrap. Sometimes you see scraps over Sigma. Sigma's a good a good scrapping point, honestly, for this one. Um, 
But the way I see teams generally play it is you see how the main four go and one team either decides that they're good enough as they are or goes over to Gamma. Um, but we'll see. There's some some interesting strats that goes on, especially with some of these lower divs. The, uh, the meta and the strat meta is a lot less stable, which is why I love ca casting, you know, div C and below. Yeah, I love seeing the built in Div C below. <laughs> Actually, that's my favorite hobby. Yeah, and and at uh, at some point you you have to understand that these teams are coming in um, with maybe even newer players or players that are particularly C build strapped. They don't have all the mechs that a lot of the folks in the tired tiers do, and so they are to some extent playing around the mechs and trying to figure out what their strats can be. Both teams are locked, so we're going to launch into the final drop of the match. And uh, yeah, I got I got to agree with you. There are some interesting builds in the the lower the lower divisions, but that's actually one of the great things about com competitive play. You don't have to be a super high level player, and you don't have to have a huge amount of knowledge in the game. You can jump in a, a lower division and uh, cut your teeth on that. Uh, it's not as scary as people think it is, and I actively encourage everyone, anyone that's curious about getting into this to just dive in. Uh, this is really where Mechoro Online shines, in my opinion. Competitive yeah, play, I... you get you get everything. You get the best of quick play and the best of faction play, and you get to play with a bunch of friends. It's great. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that and would encourage anybody who is watching the stream that is not involved in comp to do hop in for all those things that do be said, and it will elevate your gameplay elsewhere because it starts to have you think about your builds and why you bring a build and what you're doing with the build on what specific map, and it just really brings you into a higher brain space um, about this game. It's not just quick play, well, I put weapons on a mech, let's go shoot things, right? It's much more intentional. Hmm. All right, here we go. Command coming in. Let's go down over to CDU the here. Point. Stop any hostiles that get in your way. Which is looking pretty trady at first glance on the mechs, but hey. Builds will tell, right? Hunter's Snake, uh, let me see, Die Wolf, PPCs, Arctic Wolf, SRMs. Uh, Magnus in a Viper with a Flamer, not so good on this map, maybe. Medium laser machine guns. Uh, definitely more of a tradey deck from control. these people this time. What have you got? Yeah, same over here, largely trady. I want to see what's on this Hunchback. Four ER large on this Hunchback. The Shadow Cat up here at Kappa running three ER large. Um, some really interesting assault builds here. So we've got a Night Gear running uh, two Gauss, two ER large, which makes forward. all the sense in the world. But here's our Dire Wolf with Noisy Threat. One Lerm 15, three Lerm 20s, three, or, uh, two ER larges, and two medium lasers. It's like a little bit of everything on this dire wolf uh, when he could have picked one. We've got a madcap B here with UAC 20s and two large pulse, which is interesting. A little medium range on that. And we've got a K2 with two PPCs, two ER larges as well. And it looks like we've got someone heading over to Gamma that's about to run into a pair of, of hunters. Uh, oh, it's the Spider 5V. That's our cap spider with one ER large. Um who is just kind of milling about here, not sure where to go, I think. Maybe returning to the fight at this point, going up to the I-9 hill. So interestingly, interesting the uh, Hunters have taken Sigma, Epsi, and Gamma, and they've left Theta completely alone. Uh, they've got three cap to one on CDU. This puts the pressure on CDU to make some kind of move. Now, CDU's cap spider is moving into Gamma now, though, so that's going to flip pretty quickly. Um, nice thing about that cap spider, uh, not much in the fighting range, but, uh, you know, great for caps, which a large match like this, they can really make an impact. Interesting that neither team went for Theta. Um, I can't say that I blame them. It's, it's a smart move. Theta can make a difference, but Hunter said enough of that. We'll just deny Theta and we'll take Gamma, uh, and are looking to take it back. Um... Ooh, what's on Raven's Arctic Wolf here? Is that? Oh, yeah. That's the lovely, lovely Arctic Wolf one with all those SRMs going to protect Sigma. They have resource point gamma. 
And honestly, that Arctic Wolf could probably take this Virago and the Shadowhawk if the Mad Cat wasn't there to back them up. So it looks like Mad Cat, with its medium range uh, sort of tendencies, is going to try to bully things over at Sigma. Revan, try to Rambo things here. That's a bad move, Revan. Uh, Revan is... Oh yeah, that Arctic Wolf. Could do it, but CDU is all there. They are making a ploy for Sigma. And here's a thing that I see all the time that 9.5 out of 10 times really comes to bite the team that does it. They've got their traders all on one hill, um, which is really just kind of painful. It really cuts down your angles. That being said, Hunter's really spread out. It certainly does. If you're playing a trader game, you really want to have your um, long range or traders spread out a little bit so you can set up some kind of multiple angle kill box if possible. Having them all well, stuck on the same hill together just makes them a great target for some kind of light squad to come up and, well, murder them. Also, strikes and also the other team's traders having angles can move to cut them off. We got some action over here by Gamma, though. Brenton and the Firestarter looking to cut off Player Unknown's Direwolf. Um, pushing it off the hill. Is Brenton going to say good enough and go after the shard? No. All right, CDU giving up an advantage here where they could two on one this Arctic Cheetah. But they seem to have their own ideas of what's happening and Terror of Death coming to confront Brenta, who is almost legged. Let's see, what's Terror of Death got on that? That should be two SRMs, two smalls. Yep, and the Viper is in here. Yep, Brenta. Not pulling back with his buddy, not choosing to 2v1 the shard, is going to catch it from the Hunter's wolf pack here. So Brenta goes down first for CDU. Who else is in trouble? Noisy Foot, only with 63% now. Yep, in that uh, Lurm Direwolf, so must be poking out to if get some large laser one. burns on things and just catching it there. CDU making a big push for Sigma, getting everybody on Sigma, but again, these are all trade builds. Um, hanging out in what is not a whole lot of cover, either. No, trade builds, uh, trade builds all balled up together on a single cap. Not the best strat I've ever seen. But, yeah, but uh, I guess they'll take the cap points, so that's good. Yeah, I think that was the thing. They needed to cap it fast, and they needed some, some push for it. I think that was the move. Um, well, we got a little fight going over here. Gamma, who's scrapping over here? That'll be the spider and who? Savage in the Spider and Terror in the Commando. Not the most uh, punishing of mechs, but uh, Commando with a very, very clear advantage. Savage glitching all over the place. I wonder if we have more ping issues here. Frog Kim being taken down in that trade hunchback from Player Known's Direwolf. Last I saw, yeah, pushed up here towards the middle. Yeah, here we see what happens when your traders get all on a ball. The other team just kind of starts to surround you and get angles. Um, Savage now being hunted by uh, two of the hunters. Yep. Not long for this world. There he goes. Yeah, and then uh, Fjordland's probably going to go cap gamma, get that four cap. Or are they going to fight it over? Let's see. Or a little of both. Send the Viper to the fight and send the Commando to gamma. Or not. CDU's remaining traders still hanging around on Sigma. Haven't moved much and uh, heavily damaged. Noisy Foot in the Die Wolf is nearly dead. Master Pig has still got some armor left. Here comes Revenant. Revenant. Noisy Foot Revenant just runs the straight in there. <laughs> He's trying to Rambo. It's not going to work out very well for him. That Arctic Wolf can Rambo like crazy, though. You I'll think? Tell you what. Oh, I 100% I know that. I watch Star Wolf run it all the time. Lady as well. Like, you try not to, but every once in a while, Star likes to just YOLO into things, and he will actually put out damage and get crazy amounts of kills and escape alive by Ramboing with that Arctic Wolf one. Well, I have There's to admit, so Revan just ran in there and managed to escape. He ran into three mechs, and he's still alive. Yep, yeah. yeah. and watch Revan's damage numbers. They're going to be pretty huge, would be my guess. Uh, but now we're just going to pick on Master Pig here. Um, but Master Pig with those UAC 20s is going to put up a fight. But against four mechs, I don't think it's going to go too no. well. 
and he shuts down. Ah. We've gathered enough resources. This triumph will provide us. Nice try, CDU. That was benefit. the closest match yet. I'm looking at player gnome at 55, snack at 55, luscious balzac at 52, and Revan with that Arctic Wolf at 39%. They put some hurt on these guys. Let's check those damage numbers. Player unknown's direwolf at 908. Here's that Arctic Wolf, <gasps> 609. Yeah, that Arctic Wolf does work. It is such a disgustingly powerful build. What did he have in that direwolf? Was that the Lerm one? No, no. Uh, player unknown was uh, your large and gauss. Huh. So the, your typical build there. That being said, how did our other direwolf do? 160. Not so good. Needed more locks. Um, yeah. More UAVs, more locks needed there. Uh, the night gear with ER large gauss. This I think is a mech lab tail. You got some very straightforward high level comp builds on Fjord's side. Uh, CDU with some strange mix builds that you don't typically see. Um, oh, just... I did a naughty fuck. I forgot to switch to the. Uh, oh, did we? In game view. Um, oh, sorry, no. everyone. It's that right. Enjoy the thumbnail radio cast. Yeah. You can kind of see what's going on. I finally um, made that mistake. Shit. But yeah, CDU bringing that night gear with the ER large and gauss that usually does very well. And again, it does very well. You can see it in those damage numbers. Myopia for here online with Fabrios. <laughs> well played, sir. So well played both teams. Well played Fjord and CDU. Um, Fjord, I think we're in, uh, ahead going into this one, if I remember right. Uh, yes, they were uh, in their division. They're way up the top of 66, 66 points, like they're way out in the lead. Yep, and, so, and showing that here. Yeah, tonight. I think so. Uh, Nova Roma, or I'm sorry, Revan27 or Nova Roma on uh, Twitch is offering an interview. I don't know if uh, anyone from the other team is interested, but, or if that's even what you want part of your cast there, Dubs, but just pointing that out. Yep, they're invited for an interview. Um, hopefully they'll turn up. Let's see. And once again, I apologize for the, um, the thumbnail for you there. But uh, yeah, I missed that. I'm sorry about that. Happens for everybody. Yeah. All right, Master Pig is in for it too. Neck mentioning the invisible walls. Yes, that is part of an issue on some of these larger maps are the uh, the difficulties. All right, I'm going to bring him down, Dubs. Cool. Yeah, so hang around, folks. We're going to get an interview now. Um, always interesting to talk to uh, team leaders and uh, get their take on things. Well, unfortunately, um, our usual team leader could not do the interview tonight. He, didn't, he wasn't available to play tonight. So you got, you got me. Well, that's... Well, as the pilot of the, uh, you were in the Arctic Wolf, if I remember the last time, right? Arctic Wolf and Darvish, yeah. Yeah, um, that Arctic Wolf was, that was some wild, that was wild watching you in that last match. That was a lot of fun. I love the Arctic Wolf, personally. Oh, yeah, it's a great, great mech. Um, I, you're going to be seeing more of that in, in Stars. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah, it's such a heavy hitter. But let's, uh, let's talk about some of the matches. Um, how'd you go into this? We've got, you know, your... You are where you are. I think I saw earlier that this is essentially a position locked match. Um, so how did you go into preparing for this? What were some of your thoughts? Well, to be honest, I, I can start if that's okay. Yeah. Um, to be honest, the biggest sort of concern, I guess, going into this game was we didn't have eight guys from our roster even available to play. Um, and part of that, I think, is due to the, the nature of it being a position-locked match. Maybe some guys just figured they'd make other plans. Um, one guy we did think was maybe not going to make it ended up being able to show up, so we only needed to bring... We needed to add somebody last minute. Uh, uh, you saw uh, Snack go up, you know, 5 NEK um, playing tonight a little bit in, you know, Fafni and some other some other builds. Uh, he played well, we felt. Uh, but he's, like, not even just new to comp. Like, he's new to the unit. Um, he was just like online when we needed somebody to play, and we felt he filled in uh, quite well, and you know was able to execute our strategies. Um, 
we wanted to practice some different stuff. Like, obviously, you saw we, we did go pretty heavy brawl push uh, through those first few matches. But on Alpine, obviously, we, we tried to... Now, we, we'd use the similar strategy um, uh, against CDU uh, B last week on Alpine. Um, but we wanted to try to, you know, get do some more experience with some of those longer-ranged uh, decks. Just because we felt, um, you know... We wanted to put the game away first, like, we wanted to do what we're good at, which is brawling, that's what we do a lot, and once we went up, you know, for uh, we wanted to try to, you know, we pulled out a different uh, strategy, gonna go long range there, so, and we felt the guys executed well on that as well. That's awesome, you were able to bring somebody else into comp, I love hearing that. It's oh yeah, absolutely, more the merrier. Hey, well, if, you, yeah. if you're looking to, if you love hearing that, you'd, you'd be excited to hear what we're playing for five stars. That's not what we're talking about. Heck yeah. How about you, Master Fake? How did you guys come in with your preparation for your, this uh, this match? So, there was quite a bit of us that was basically left during the middle of the season. So I had to make a lot of substitutions for, like, the players here. It, like, or at least, you know? Yeah, roster changes like that. Um are very difficult, so I commend you for sticking with it. It was interesting watching you guys play um, CDU. You, you seem to have like a good grip of the initial starting positions, but maybe your comms and your, your focus were a bit off there, because I saw um, Fjord pushing in, and you didn't seem to react as quickly as I thought you could have done. How was your comms? Uh, we, you know, did you did you think about backing off? And after you saw Fjord like dropping a uh, brawl push for the first couple of drops. So. We kind of did stick to the strategy that we were running for in each individual map, but yeah, we weren't expecting that much push, you know. For sure, those pushes can, uh, especially if you don't spot them or don't think about it, they can certainly take you off guard. Um, and adapting to them is is certainly difficult. I will mention that out. Yeah, it is very tricky. If you don't see it coming, or you see it coming too late, or you don't react to it quick enough, uh, you can get overwhelmed by a brawl push. That's why they're so effective. For sure, for sure. So this... This one, of course, we've had a number of weeks dealing with um, domination and conquest mixed uh, in everything, where a lot of other uh, tournaments are just conquest. So, how did you approach each? Um, how did you approach the different um, map modes? Did it have any effect on what you planned or what you set up to do, or were you just going in there and uh, you know hoping to adapt? Um. Okay, you can go, Master. Of course, the, the map different. Of course, like the game would definitely change how we're going to do it. We knew that previously, fewer are generally ones that brawl and push a lot, and ones that aim for a lot of leg. Which is what we saw here. So, what I told everyone to do or the map service. Like armor mask, because I'm pretty sure that some of us here didn't have that max before, and we kind of just I'm not exactly sure what to say here. Other than I think that for the Alpine Peaks one, I'm gonna take that one. I decided to run the Madcap two instead of what I was regular. I was originally going to run because I wouldn't exactly know if this one was going to be a push one as well. Cause... Yeah, yeah, I was noticing that uh, that Mad Cat there, and everyone else seemed to be ER large almost exclusively. Maybe a couple of Gauss thrown in there, and then here's here's Master Pig with a large pulse and UAC 20s, which we saw come into play at the end. But yeah, that was. Uh... I figured that was might have been part of that uh, that thought process there for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, I was in that Arctic Wolf, and, and you wrecked me in that in that Mad Cat. I had to bug out for a second and wait for 
you know, some foot to get there. But uh, yeah, we had, you know, we had thought, uh, obviously brawling is, is always going to be on the table for our team, but really on Alpine, we felt that, you know, ranged was going to be the play, but really we wanted more of a cap strategy uh, where we had our, our mediums and our lights, you know, go off and, and try to establish a three cap at the beginning. Um, Alpine's one of the maps we like to play more cap cap strats on. Like if you look at the way we you know play domination, domination is just gonna be a straight brawl push. Um, general, well, basically always from us. I guess I could say that with looking back, I think we basically always tried to brawl on dom. Um, sometimes we've we've had a little bit different strategies thrown in there. Um, where it wasn't straight brawl all the way, but just a little brawly. Uh, but Conquest, you know, there's some maps where we like to cap, and then there's some maps where we felt it was not necessary to to cap. You know, smaller maps. Uh, we, we tried to, you know, get, establish caps on Lubalite. Um, but Solera City, you know, we, we did go get a couple caps, but after that it was just straight brawl all the way. Um, so, yeah. it Domination really favors our play style. So we, we were glad that it wasn't all conquest, uh, especially on some of those, you know, um, some of those maps. But we had seen all these maps before, so we were able to adapt some of the strategies, you know, we had used previously, particularly on Rubelite. Uh, you may not have watched, well, obviously I don't think you cast, but I, I don't, I will, never mind. Um, on Rubelite in the past, we've been sending our mediums and our lights to points and and we'd actually got caught out uh well we did them once on rubelite and once on tourmaline but we actually got caught out a couple times on that um and, and we really you know tried to adjust our strategy for that specifically where we're not putting our, our pilots in compromising positions early in the match um but we still try to you know get two caps and then fight for theta or whatever you know standard stuff but um I think Conquest is a little bit more dynamic than Dom in a lot of ways, but... Yeah, I'd agree with that. So, what are your plans for, for the future? Um, Revan, uh, I suggest your team's probably going to move up a division at least, maybe two. And also CDUA, Master Pig. Um, are you guys going to be... Uh, let me see, what's the next tournament? Uh, Tournament of Stars. Oh, Star. Tournament of Stars. Yeah. Are you both going to be fielding a team for that? And also, what are your thoughts uh, later this year on um, Championship Series? Um, I'll start. So this was kind of our first comp event for, for FJRD. Um, you know, we've been around the block a while, especially on Faction. Um, and we've been more of a developmental unit where, you know, trying to train train pilots that are new to the game up and get them to give. And we still do that. Uh, that's still part of our identity. Um, but we've also been recruiting a lot more more experienced pilots. So, you know, our first comp event, we, we wanted to take it slow. You know, we fielded basically who are, anyone who signed up for inter who Anyone who was interested, you know, signed up and um, we went with it. But we were kind of just playing for the rewards, honestly, when we when we signed up. Um, we ended up adding a couple guys to the roster later. Um, me, Luscious, uh, notably, uh, were added after the initial sign-up period. Um, but now, after how successful it's been, you know, we've been, and how, how much we're growing, we're actually adding a um, an international team for uh, Tournament of Stars with a smaller roster size. Uh, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to... Uh, field some extra teams and just kind of see how it goes. Um, you know, we had a scrim against them this morning. Um, and we're still kind of figuring out what our plan for Tournament of Stars, but, um, you know, we're, 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 ha we're excited that they're going to be competing. We're also going to try and field, I think, two more North American teams. So that would be a total of four teams uh, competing for FJRD in this next uh, tournament. We're not necessarily, you know, they're, they're more kind of be going to be playing a little bit more casually, just, you know, playing for, for fun and, and seeing if they can, you know, win a little bit and get some awards. But uh, we're excited about how this uh, first North American team is played. Um, they we're now going to be called Fjord, I think. Uh, so that's something to, to look out for. But 
uh, we're really excited about the future of, of the unit and comp and uh, going forward to um, world championships. We're still not sure if we're going to try to, you know, pull our, you know, try to make the time zones work to have our best international pilots play with, with, with the main team. Cause we really do have some skills on that squad. Or if we'll just try and field another, you know, field two, you know, North American and a international team for that. Um, you know, we're still in the works with that, but we're really excited about where, where the unit's at with Tom right now. Thank you very much, Must Peak. Yeah. What are your plans Please. for the future? In my opinion, I personally think that Crypto will be a lot better in things than I would be, because he's normally the one that runs the CDOA. I was chosen to be the team leader today because Crypto is unavailable. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I know a lot of people had availability issues. Crypto's, Crypto's a good dude, and I think he's done a good job with you guys. I, I, I am in your Discord, and it looks like you guys are maybe adding some, some extra teams for, for um, tournament starts similar to us. Is that, is that true? We're adding, like, a comp team. What is it? Sorry, you got cut off. I believe we're also doing, like, international stuff as well. Like, we're adding, like... That's what it looks team. like. Yeah. That's kind of what I think that we're doing. All right. Well, I mean, I, I, I think if if we can get those guys, maybe just maybe set up a scrim. Um, I know you're probably not the person to talk to you about that, but if our, you know, none of our European guys, uh, what's well, European and we don't have enough for a full European team. It's European and Australian. Um, but if we can set up a scrim with with your European team, that I think that'd be good, just because they don't really have the, um, because it's. You know, they're, they're, they're the comp, actually, for a, for a lot of them. That's a really good um, thing. Cooperation between teams and cross-training is, is great. It raises everyone as games, so if you can get that on, that would be great. I, 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 we have a lot of respect for, for CDU. Um, you know, we've played them four times in this comp event. Um, obviously, CDU Bandits B being, you know, the sort of more experienced team, I think. They, I think you guys have had some struggle, especially today, obviously, with having you know, some subs in, Crypto not here and stuff. They mentioned previously that maybe you, some of you guys don't have all the mechs, where CDU B is maybe a little bit, they have more mechs. Like, they they played really, really well. I'm really actually looking forward to their game against 5-6. Um, you know, we have a lot of respect for CDU, and we, we really like you guys. So, um, you know, I know it was a tough, tough result for you guys tonight, but you guys played well. Um, particularly. Um, Brenta and uh, Lahiro both played well. Um, yeah, we 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 like working with you guys, and we'd like to you know, continue having a positive relationship. Okay, well, thank you both very much for the interview. Um, to everyone watching, if you want to catch a bit more action, there is a stream ongoing right now. The last match in Division E of this tournament. Uh, on MW Leagues 2, so you can head over there and uh, finish up watching the action there. Uh, I am actually going there right now. Um, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, everybody. All right. Hey, uh, Master, I'll, I'll, we don't have to do it on the stream, but if we could talk you know, for a second, that'd be cool. Okay, so I'm going to silence the stream now. You guys can talk. All right, I just want to say, like, thank